Good morning, Kennebue Baptist Church family. I appreciate you joining us for uh, worship this morning. And uh, I'm going to be preaching on a subject that I think would be very appropriate for us. And that is how to keep your head on straight in uncertain times. If you do not remember anything else, start with the title. How to keep your head on straight in uncertain times. Uh, take your Bible, if you would, and turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's where we're going to be reading from. And uh, I would encourage you to read verses 1 through 17, the entire chapter, but I'm just going to read the first four verses. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and beginning in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." Again, I want to remind you here that we're going to talk about this subject of keeping your head on straight. In this very uncertain time, I want to give you some do's and some don'ts today that's going to help us uh, do that this morning. Back in 2011, there was a Christian broadcaster by the name of Harold Camping. And this gentleman had announced that the world was going to end on May 21st, 2011. Now, this individual had thousands upon thousands of listeners, and he had over $100 million also in assets. Many people had quit their jobs. Many people had sold their homes. Many people had invested their uh, life savings into publishing newsletters and articles and billboards warning people that May 21st, 2011, the world was going to end and Jesus would return. Well, guess what happened? May 21st came, and May 21st went, and there was no rapture of the saints. It, in fact, it was just an ordinary day that probably you don't even remember, nor do I remember. What most people don't realize, though, is that this was not the first time that Mr. Harold Camping got it wrong. He had made some other predictions as well. But it was interesting that in 2013, just about a year before he had passed away, he did make a public apology uh, through his uh, website for all of the failed predictions that he had had. But the interesting thing, and the reason I'm telling you this, is because Harold Camping was not the first of, of his kind. Throughout history, individuals have always used world events to scare people and try to tell people that Jesus is going to come back on this specific day and he's going to come back real soon. Well, could Jesus come back? Jesus could come back today. We're not denying that at all. But in the past, people have always predicted that and they have always uh, been wrong. Now, I will say that some of these people are very sincere in their uh, convictions. Some are sincerely just misled. Some of the individuals that make these types of predictions, they are, uh, see it as a, a self-serving opportunity for them to make money and for them to push kind of their, uh, their agenda. But let me back up here for just a moment and ask a question. Does the Bible say that one day Jesus will return? Yes, the Bible teaches that. Yes, the Bible speaks of that. But it's not something that any of us should fear. And it's definitely not something we should use for some hidden type of agenda. In fact, we shouldn't spend our entire life chasing every wild notion that happens and bring it to a conclusion that the apocalypse is about to take place. I want to tell you something. Throughout history, <clears throat> well, that's always been the case. And not only throughout history, but I can even go back to my own ministry. 
Because I have met a number of believers who were disproportionately focused on the final days. That's all that they could talk about. It's all that they could think about. And every time something would happen in our world, they would find a scripture verse and they would use it to say, see, I'm telling you, Jesus, he's coming back soon. Now, let me say to you again, I believe fully that Jesus could return at any time. The problem is that people are so obsessed with world events and things that are going on and studying the last days and using everything that is happening even today to say, look, it's, it's imminent, it's going to happen any time that um, we have to be ready. And again, yes, we have to be ready. We should always live our lives as Christians being ready. But when we become so consumed with focusing on the apocalypse, then we never get around to living our daily Christian life. The Apostle Paul actually warned about this tendency in his letter, especially the text that we are reading today. Now, the question we must ask is simply this. How do you and I, as a Christian, keep our head on straight in these uncertain times? How do we not jump on this doom and gloom bandwagon that some even so-called Christians have jumped on even in the last couple weeks? Well, it's interesting to note that the first century Christians, they believed Jesus' return was imminent. They believed that Jesus would return even in their lifetime. And because of that, there was a lot of misinformation uh, that was going around. In fact, some of the Christians, the first century Christians, uh, they thought that Jesus had already returned. There was letters that was uh, circulating it during that time that was supposedly written by the Apostle Paul. And so there was a lot of misinformation there. And so in our text today, here's what happens. The Apostle Paul sets the record straight. It's interesting because our generation has been called an information age, when really what it should be called is the misinformation age. There's all this nonsense that's floating around out there. And what I'm telling you as a church that if your head is not on straight, you're going to find yourself believing a lot of things that's going to do nothing more than cause you stress and anxiety and even fear. So today, I want to talk about some do's and some don'ts that will help us keep our head on straight. Remember, I said I want to preach this morning on the subject of keeping your head on straight during these difficult times. What must we do? Three do's and three don'ts. Here they are. Number one, don't be gullible. And here's the do. Do check everything before you believe anything. Now, for those of you that take notes, I want you to write that down. Don't be gullible. That's the don't. Do check everything before you believe anything. You know, in the first century there, when some of the believers had heard that Jesus had already come back, here's what happened. They bought into it. Someone simply said it, and they bought into it. And they wanted to know where, where he was. Should they quit their jobs? Should they sell their homes? And so the Apostle Paul says to them, wait a minute, guys, not so fast. Let's, let's just slow down. He's saying, don't be so gullible. He's saying, think first. In fact, would you go back to verse verses 1 through 3 with me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I want to read this again, and I want you to follow along. Here's what Paul says. He says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. He's talking about the rapture when Jesus returns and we would go be with him. In verse 2 he says, That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, he's saying uh, there's letters out there that saying that they're they're written by me as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and the man, uh, the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, do you know what Paul is saying? He is saying very specifically, very emphatically, don't be gullible. He is saying, don't believe everything that you hear. In fact, before you believe it, check it out. 
because it's probably not true. The interesting thing here is Paul had already taught them about the second coming of Christ. Paul had taught in depth about this. And so now Paul is just simply saying to them, weigh what you're hearing against what you already know. And that would be good advice for us today in these uncertain times as well. How many of you remember the old uh, Y2K crisis where we were supposed to expire and we would not be able to get water and we would go to the bank and we would not be able to take our money out of the bank and uh, you'd wake up in the middle of the night and your water and your electricity would not be working. Guess what happened? None of that happened. Not one single thing happened. But yet, do you know they, they had books that were written about that by many Christian authors too, by the way, warning people that all these things were, were going to happen. Here's what I'm saying. Every day we face an opportunity where we either choose to believe a bunch of stuff that we, do, we know is not true or we step back and we stop and, and we think realistically and we're not gullible and we check before we believe everything that we hear. That was the advice the Apostle Paul was given in the early church and it's advice that we should still use today. All you have to do, folks, is get on social media. All you need to do is just get on Facebook today and you'll hear some crazy story about the current events that's going on in our world. And if you hit that share button, here's what's going to happen. It's going to scare somebody out of their skin. It's going to scare people to death. And by the way, it amazes me how people who otherwise seem to be sane will believe the craziest claims. And then not only do they believe it, but then they spread it on to their friends. And the next thing you know, we have all this chaos and uncertainty that goes on with it. You know what that does? It creates an environment of fear. It creates an environment of panic. And do you realize that panic and fear are not conductive to living a life of faith? In fact, the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. He's talking to those of us that are Christians. So I want to say very specifically to you again this morning, don't be gullible. Check everything before you believe anything, especially in these days. Here's the second do and don't that the Apostle Paul gave the early church, and I think they apply to us today as well. And number two, don't forget how this story ends. But do remember who is always in control. Now let's think about that for a moment. Paul warns them, yes, difficult days are ahead. He said, I can assure you that, that you're going to have some difficult days in your life. And in fact, look in verse 8 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He said, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. What is the Apostle Paul doing here? The Apostle Paul is reminding those early Christians who are so uncertain in the day that they're living, he is reminding them what he's already taught them, and that is how the story actually ends. You see, there are many believers in the world, and I would even say some preachers and pastors among them, who all they want to talk about, all they want to talk about today is how bad the world really is. In fact, these people have a pessimistic view of the present and a fatalistic view of the future. But we must keep this idea foremost in our minds at all times, and I said this last week, that no matter what, God is in control. That, that is how we live our Christian life. That is what drives us. And not only do we remember that God is in control, but as a Christian, we have read the Bible and we know ultimately how this story is going to end. And just like the Apostle Paul told them, in their day, the first century Christians, he said, remember how this thing ends. Keep that in your mind. It's a lesson for you and I as well today. Because in life, there's going to be trouble. Uh, that's true. None of us are, are denying that. In fact, Jesus even said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. He's saying, remember how this thing ends. 
In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, the apostle John said the same thing. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Remember how this thing ends. I want to tell you something. It's, it's hard to preach this doom and gloom gospel and still have faith in the scriptures. Because the scriptures make it very plain that suffering and chaos is only temporary to those of us that are Christians. In fact, the Bible says that in the last days, evil will reign for a season, but we must remember only for a season. Do not forget how this story ends. How does the story end? Well, we spend eternity with Christ, and that should be encouraging to all of us. Now, here's a third and final do and don't that I want to share with you this morning as we think about keeping our head on straight. Number three, don't let go of your lifeline, but do hold on tight to the empowering truth. Now, let me explain this here for just a moment. I have seen Christians try to withstand the enemy's attacks on their own strength. And can I just tell you something? It never works. That is the reason why in 2 Thessalonians, especially in chapter 2, Paul is encouraging believers to stay connected to their lifeline. What is their lifeline? It's the lifeline that we have as well. I want you to listen to what he says in uh, verse 15 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle." Now, the Apostle Paul's not just talking about doctrinal truths here. He's talking about the daily disciplines in your Christian life. Do you know the best way to keep your head on straight and to avoid all this craziness? It is to keep yourself immersed in the Word of God. It gives you a different perspective of how the world operates. So I'm encouraging you to keep your head on straight by immersing yourself and you should have time, you can't go anywhere, to immerse yourself in the Word of God. Now let's look as he closes here in verse 16 and 17. Paul says, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. I want you to remember today that Jesus is our lifeline. Jesus is our source of strength. Jesus is our encouragement in these crazy times that we're living in. And the more that you and I, the more time we will spend in his presence, the fuller our faith will become. I want to encourage you with those words, the same message that the Apostle Paul was encouraging uh, the early Christians with when they thought Jesus had returned and, and they were ready to just throw their hands up and, and uh, it was an uncertain time and, and they didn't really know what was going on. And Paul saying to them, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing, keep your head on straight. And he gives them these basic principles. I want to challenge you today as a church. In these crazy times, and, and it seems some of the craziness is wearing off now, and I'm, I'm glad of that. Maybe things can get back somewhat to, to normal. But there's still some that have a lot of anxiety and a lot of uncertainty through all of this. Can we just remember that one truth, that Jesus is in control and he is our lifeline? I hope and pray that this has helped you this morning, and I encourage you to go back and read all 17 verses in this chapter. Would you do that today? Thank you and God bless you.